Welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at these goggles here. These are the new HD3 goggles from Fat Shark. Now, we've had a couple of Fat Shark goggles in our time. This is the latest set that we've got, and until now, we have been flying exclusively pretty much with these little guys here. These are the Fat Shark Dominator V3s. So, what we're going to do in this video is talk about these new HD3s, compare them with the HD2s that they're replacing, and also talk about the differences between the HD3s and the Dominator V3s, so if you're looking at investing in a set of Fat Shark goggles, you can make a decision between the two. If you'd like to go and watch the Dominator V3 review, you can go and watch it here, where we go through all of the similar stuff to what we're doing in this video, but we are going to spend a little bit more time talking about some of the comparisons because these are designed for slightly different audiences, so it's kind of important to know which one of those you fall into to try and decide which one of these sets of goggles is going to be the right one for you. So first of all, let's talk about what's in the box. So you obviously get the goggles, the battery, you don't get a receiver or an antenna. We've popped a little receiver under here and uh, that is giving us full 40 channels. In addition to the goggles and the battery, in the box you get the big case that's now standard with these bigger goggles. You obviously get a little manual. You get some adapters for the HDMI port underneath. The way this HDMI port works is slightly different from the HD2s, and we'll talk about that. You get the charging cable for the battery. You get a couple of these felt style covers for going around the eyes. Uh, the way it works is that in the kit, you actually get some Velcro that you stick on first, and then the pads go on top. I'm using the thinner pad at the moment. That just happens to be more comfortable for my face. Then you have an AV cable, so you can use any AV inputs if you want to use these for something like a ground station. Then you have a HDMI cable too, which is a nice touch. It's amazing how much HDMI stuff is coming these days without a cable. It's a nice thick one as well. The only thing you get apart from that is your polishing cloth and you get some stickers. So let me very quickly go over the features of these because almost everything is identical to the HD2s with two important differences. So on this we have a 42 degree field of view, uh, so that's corner to corner. We'll do a field of view comparison between this and the Dominator V3s. I've kind of put together a little graphic to try and explain because that big field of view and the 4-3 aspect ratio in these does make the screen look an awful lot bigger than I'm used to looking at something like the Dominator V3s. It's a nice, big, clean, clear image. Uh, the IPD adjustment is underneath, just like all of the current generation, so you can change where the actual lenses are in relation to your eyes. So as I do the IPD adjustment, you can actually see those lenses moving around. For me, I need them close to the centre for everything to work well. And the resolution of the screen at the back, even though it's called HD, we're not talking about 720p panels here, the resolution at the back is 800 by 600 pixels. So all of that is pretty much the same as the HD2s. These also support 3D, just like the Dominators do. So they provide HD support on both the AV inputs, which is the receiver, or the analog cable, and it also does 3D on the HDMI as well. So what's changed then between the HD2 and the HD3? The first change is the way that the HDMI works. In HDMI mode, it displays natively in 16.9. So effectively, the top and bottom of the screen have black bands. So if you want to watch something from your computer or you want to do some kind of FPV games or things like that, if you have the input set to be widescreen, that's going to match perfectly with these goggles because that's the resolution they're going to display on. The HD2 has displayed their HDMI input as 4.3. The other big change is the optics. Now that big field of view, 42 degrees, uh, as opposed to the Dominator's 30 degrees, that big image needs some pretty specialized optics. And the HD2s came in for a lot of criticism. A lot of pilots struggled to focus on the screen and had fuzziness around the edges of the image. I'm very pleased to say that these work perfectly. So I've not had any problems with that. I'm not as young as I used to be anymore, so I'm not a 20-something-year-old guy flying these around. I'm in my mid to late 40s, 
and I can't focus on anything closer than about 30 35 centimeters away easily and I can use these without a problem at all. There is the space for the diopter adjustment if you wear glasses but for me I'm not bad enough to need reading glasses yet but they work perfectly. So what's the differences between these goggles then and these? The difference is really is whether or not you're interested in a 16-9 aspect ratio, that kind of widescreen, or a more traditional 4-3 aspect ratio. Let's talk about field of view a little bit because that gives you a really good idea of the differences between these two goggles. In the new HD3s, as I said, there are 800 by 600 pixels on the panels. On the Dominator V3, it's 800 by 480, so it is thinner but wider. So let me just put a graphic here that hopefully will explain this in a little bit more detail. I've tried to have to figure this out and give a way of explaining the differences of the, what you can see in these goggles because it's very difficult in a review video like this to actually show you what they're like in practice. Because unfortunately, there's no way that I can do that because this is a camera, not a set of eyes. So first of all, let's talk about the default setting. So here we are, we have a 4-3 aspect ratio. This is what it looks like in the HD3, and this is a 42 degree view. It's nice and big, but it isn't too big that the edges are difficult to focus on or you have to move your eye around too much. It's a nice, big cinema screen style feeling. You can also display, as we've talked about, on the HD3s, the HDMI input as a 16.9 image. Now that 16.9 image, you kind of lose the top and bottom of that panel, so it means it actually drops it to a 38 degree field of view. The last thing I'll put in then is what the comparative Dominator V3 widescreen looks like, which is a 30 degree field of view. And you can see how much bigger the image appears in these new HD3 goggles. Sadly, you can't change the AV aspect ratio. By default, it's 4.3 and it's set to 4.3. So even if we're using a widescreen camera, then what will happen is that image is stretched to fit the frame. But if you're using a natively 4.3 camera, something like a 700 V2 TVL or one of those, or one of the many other cameras on the market, then it will appear natively in the right aspect ratio and it'll look fantastic. So what do they like to use? Well, they're just like any other Fat Shark goggles at the moment. They're very, very comfortable. I find them very easy to use and can wear them for very long periods of time. The fan enclosure is a fantastic addition. I really love this. It does mean that I can wear them in the height of summer when I'm a little bit sweaty and I don't get all the condensation coming out on the glasses. Uh, similarly, I can also use them in very cold weather as well, where if the lenses are a little bit cooler than my eyes, the condensation will settle out to them. So they are kind of an all round, all weather set. The image as it appears, I'm gonna try and see if this is gonna work and you, can, and you can see the image. There we go. Uh, for that 4-3 view is absolutely beautiful. The panels look great and it gives you a lovely clear view of what is going on. To actually start the DVI recorder is exactly the same as the other goggles. You press and hold this button here until the red light under the SD card comes on. Press it again and then that little light starts flashing. That means you're recording and then to stop recording you press the button again beeps twice and there it's finished. Again, the resolution on this is only 640 by 480, so you get lots of room on the card, but it's a nice visual representation of the flight that you're having. But again, very difficult for you to see, but hopefully you can see that that's working great. So in summary, who would fly these? Well, I've got a lot of friends who will prefer these over the Dominator V3s for two big reasons. The main reason is going to be that they are 4-3 aspect ratio, which for racing seems to be a much more popular choice. Things like the HS 1177 cameras, a lot of the 4-3 cameras that are on the market at the moment that FPV racers use, they like to have that view above and below, so when they're cranked over they don't lose any of the visibility about what's coming at them further on around the course. The other thing that is useful is that additional resolution as well. The panels, although they're not 720p, 
uh, provide a beautiful image of the flight and they are really really nice to use. I'm glad I've waited to the HD3s and didn't plump for the HD2s because I think Fat Shark have finally cracked it. For me the only thing that was missing would just be that little button to be able to flick between the AV modes between that beautiful 4.3 image and that very large 16.9 view as well for those times where I'm using something like the 960 cameras. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.